Hey, Edith, I'm so excited you're joining us. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me for yet another um, pressure cooker workshop. Um, I'm really excited for anybody that I've not met. I'm Jamie Swanson, and this may will be my 20 year anniversary with Pamper Chef. So having so much fun. And I am it just it's just been a blessing to meet each and every one of you over um, over some portion of those years. So really, really excited. So just a couple of housekeeping rules that you'll want to know about. Um, to make this successful for you and everybody else um, is a couple of things. If you're going to have any background noise, um, go ahead and hit the mute button. It looks like a microphone on your um, computer or let's see. Might be able to help with some of them um, on your computer or your phone, because what will happen is every time you say something, it will um, take over the screen. OK, so another thing that you can do, I'm not sure on the phones how different it is, but on a computer in the top right, if you click um, gallery view, you'll see everybody. Um, but if you put speaker view, that will put me in a larger um, in a larger frame. But don't worry, you're going to have plenty of opportunity to ask all the questions um, that you have, um, you know, tonight. It's going to be very interactive, but I just don't want um, there to be tons of um, tons of interruptions and for, for folks not to get, a, you know, just a good experience because, you know, your, your dog's barking and um, that, that you can't see anything. So, um, all right. So just, by, and I, I'm looking at my phone, but I've also got my computer here so I can see your faces. Um, so just by a show of hands, how many of you have some type of pressure cooker? And by the looks of most of you, I think you've got mine, which is exciting, <laughs> which is exciting. But, it, but I'm sure that others have um, another type of pressure cooker, which is totally, totally fine. Um, the reason that I don't call this a quick cooker workshop is because I know that there's so many people that got, have gotten an Instant Pot or some other brand over the years and they are just so intimidated to get it out of, of the box or take it out of the pantry. Um, and they are pretty universal. They're, you know, I, I definitely think ours has some, some nice bells and whistles, but it is universal, the things that you can do um, with most of them. So my main goal is to A, help you become not scared of it um, because it, it really is a valuable tool that you've got no matter what the, the logo that's that's on the front of it. Um, and then the other thing is I really want to inspire you with some super simple um, things. So I'm going to show you a handful of um, recipes and um, different things that are just real basic things that I'm going to do. And then I'm, um, the last thing I'm going to make is I wouldn't say it's an involved recipe, but it's very impressive because you've got a meat, you've got a pasta, um, and everything comes um, all together um, really nicely. So, uh, but everybody I think here does have some type of, of pressure cooker. Now on a scale of one to 10, um, one being I've never used it ever, and 10 being I use it at least once a week, you know, once a week or more, um, put it in the chat, like how, how often you're using your, your pressure cooker. Okay. Um, and hopefully most of you know where the chat is at. Um, so it is, um, you know, if you're using your computer down at the bottom and it may be under some dots, um, if you, you're using your phone. So, okay. So we've got some good variety. So let's see a five, a 10, Tammy Lynn has mastered it. That is good. Um, okay, great, great. So I'm, I'm feeling like most of you are, um, you know, are pretty excited and using, you know, using your device um, pretty often. All right, so one of the things that I love um, is it's really, you can do a lot of things one pot, okay? So the, um, with this, um, I, I make a lot of soups. I do, um, like I'll do a lot of roast and sometimes I'll put the veggies or starch um, in there and just, just do quite a variety of things. Um, now I am gonna go ahead and I'll take the lid off and show you what I've got. And then we're gonna talk some more details in just a second. So all I did before you guys um, came on was I took six eggs and um, I just put them in here on steam for um, 12 minutes, or actually I'm um, custom for 12 minutes. Has anybody steamed eggs before? Or does anybody steam their eggs just in general? Once you start, you will not, you know, that, that I just, once I started steaming eggs, I um, certainly um, have, have not boiled another one on the stove top because it is so easy, um, so easy to do. 
and you get the perfect egg every single time. So um, what I did was, um, and there's a lot of different methods. Some people do, um, I think like a five, 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 so five minutes um, under pressure, five minutes um, for a natural release in the pressure, and then um, five minutes in ice water. So I just do the 12 minutes and then I'm um, just stick it in the ice water and I've had perfect results every time. So um, after they cool for just a minute, um, I am gonna show you just how great it feels and then how beautiful the inside of the egg is. Because, you know, especially if you get really fresh eggs and you like are doing a bunch of deviled eggs or maybe even it's, you know, um, you know Easter time and you're, you're making the eggs, it's, it's just so embarrassing when you, you've got all these beautiful eggs and then you peel them and they're no longer beautiful. So um, we're gonna um, take that and just, just move that over for now. So the next thing I'm going to do, just to just give you an example, and we'll talk in more detail because I'm going to open up the line um, for questions and um, feedback on what you're doing. Um, but one of the things that I think makes the pressure cooker so special is you can come home from work and think, oh my gosh, I totally forgot to get the chicken or the pork chop out of the, um, out of the freezer. So that is one of the beauties um, is you can cook from frozen. So um, anytime you're cooking in a pressure cooker, you need at least one cup of liquid. So that can be water, it can be raw, um, you know, whatever, whatever it is that you're doing. So um, one of the things that I found, especially if I know that I'm going to pop it in the, um, the pressure cooker, is I try to not let them overlap when you freeze them. So even if you have to wrap them individually, um, because that does make it a little bit easier when you can have them individually rather than um, on top of each other. Okay, so I've got just got two frozen chicken breasts um, and some water um, in there. So I'm going to put that right back on. And then I am going to go to, I'm going to cancel. And then I'm going to go to the chicken and poultry. Um, and it frozen, it, it calls for, I think, about, um, about 12 minutes. So I'll just do time. And we'll just do 13 minutes for good, good measure because those were, were longer chicken breasts. All right, so let's get on the topic of meat. So um, you guys are welcome to come off of mute and um, tell me what type of meat that you're doing um, doing in your cooker. Okay, because I'd, I'd love um, for you guys to share some ideas of things that, that you love to do. So who has some favorites? I do chicken a lot, but when I have company, I have done pork roasts and then boneless pork chops that are, are delicious. Okay, yeah. Yep, that's that's perfect. Yeah, I, I do a fair amount of chicken. Salsa chicken is one of my favorites. So if you're one of the folks that just haven't has it used it a lot, that is a great place to start. So I would take three chicken breasts, and you know if you've got them um, unthawed, it's um, or if they're they're thawed, um, it probably would take about ten minutes or so, and then I'm uh, just a little bit more if it if it is frozen. And then just one jar of salsa. So that's really nice. And that's a great meal that you can stretch over multiple days. You just add more chicken, a little more salsa, but you can um, serve it as tacos. You can serve it over a salad. You could do it as um, like a, a quesadilla, whatever you want to do. So that is definitely a good, um, what I call investment cooking. So cook once and eat multiple times, but you don't have to eat it, you know, the same way every single time. So, all right, what other meats? Melissa, I know you um, are a big, big fan of the quick cooker. So what kind of meats are you doing in yours? Well, I went home from work a lot and forgot to pull out the frozen ground beef, but I'll mm -hmm. throw it in there and I make like the best tacos. The kids, the family love them. So I love being able to throw in and I double batch it too. I'll do like four pounds of frozen ground beef and turn it into tacos in like 20 minutes. Yeah. That's definitely yeah. favorite. I do chicken. I've done pork, but I think the, the ground beef tacos, I do chili in there a lot. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's good. Yeah. I do, I do a lot of chili and taco soup. I actually just threw the rest of the taco soup out, but I had, I was like, oh, I should have frozen that, but I it just didn't make it to the freezer. So, um, all right. What other meats has, have you guys done that um, have, have been a great success? I did a pork loin last night with and just put potatoes and onions and carrots in it and put about a couple of cups of water in it mm -hmm. and is there a kind of a something that you can go by like a guide besides yep. the guidebook 
uh, and tell you how long to cook the meat. Um, so, th Lisa, that's a great point. And for anybody, I, I think the, the a lot of you do have the, the Pampered Chef um, one, but anybody that doesn't and needs some inspiration, you, you can tell that mine gets used a lot. Um, but I can send you the e-copy of um, this little cooking guide um, to, so you can you can check it out. Um, and it's kind of nice to have the e-guide, like, you know, from a text for me. So if you're at the grocery store, you can be like, oh, my gosh, I'm mm -hmm. going to make those your ribs. And I can pull that up really, really quickly. Um, but that brings up a great point. Um, the little cooking guide is helpful, um, you know, to, to find. And I, I use it a lot, like, um, you know, to, to figure out, like, with the, if you were doing a whole chicken in here, if it were not frozen, you do 25 to 30 minutes. If it is frozen, 40 to 45. So I find that this is a real handy guide. But you guys, I also Google so many things. Like, I use Dr. Google for a lot of things. But, um, and especially for if I want to make a recipe for the first time, um, you know, some recipes have just a couple of reviews. I find the exact recipe that is probably in there 30 times. And um, I can probably, you know, if I can find one that has like 50 or more good reviews, that's the one I'm going to choose. So um, I, Google has Google has not um, let me down. <laughs> so, and, but, um, and what surprised me one time I cooked chicken bog, which is chicken and rice. Mm -hmm. You know, some people don't call it bog, we call it bog. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, it amazed me that the rice come out, it come out perfect and I didn't have to sit over the pot for the rice. Yeah. So I was good. Yeah. <laughs> that's perfect. And that's what I'm going to put in here next. So I, I'm doing the frozen chicken now. Um, and then once that comes out, I'm going to move it over and then I'm just going to do um, some steamed rice. That only takes four minutes um, to do. And, and that's just, you know, that's wonderful. Such a, a, a quick way to do it. So. Um, um, so good question, um, Randy, is there a um, guide for the slow cooker? There are, I think, I'm not sure that there are any slow cooker recipes in the current one. I am going to, I'm going to share with you guys something really fun um, that's coming out next Tuesday. Um, but I, I don't think there are slow cooker um, recipes for this, but on our website, there are some great slow cooker um, recipes. So what I would do is maybe, you know, if you're looking for something specific, um, just like even go to the Pampered Chef web, website and just type in slow cooker and it should pull up, um, you know, some recipes there or um, yeah, even, even Dr. Google, Dr. Google. Yeah, usually, usually we'll, we'll come up with some good ones too. So um, anyway, so um, one of the things that you'll notice is um, on every type of pressure cooker, it, um, it takes some time to come up to pressure. So if you um, live with this frozen chicken, it's probably going to take a, you know, a decent amount of time. Actually, I'm going to move it um, over here because it might take longer than, than I need for it to. Um, to do it and. I want to um whatever I'm demoing I want on the on this side but um but it, it does kind of rotate for a little bit while it's coming up to pressure so here's a little hack that I learned um when I first got it if I know that I'm kind of short on time and I don't need the full you know I don't have the full 10 minutes for it to come up to pressure is I'll go ahead and hit the sear um button um, which on other brands may be saute, but it's the same function, exactly the same function. Um, I'll do that and it starts heating the bottom. So it cuts that, um, that pressure, you know, come to pressure time down. Um, so make sure that you count about 10 minutes into your, your cook, you know, into your cook time um, with that. So, all right, let's see anything else. All right. So yes, let's see a couple of other things. So, oh yeah. Um, and actually Monica, um, Connie and I were talking about, she's, she does a lot of dried beans um, as well. And I, I love doing black eyed peas, especially what's so fantastic about doing black eyed peas or any of the things you don't have to soak them overnight. Like, a, like if you were doing it in a slow cooker, um, you can just rinse them and pop them in. So it takes about 20 minutes um, to do those. And especially if you're, you know, trying to, to watch your budget, that is a super, um, super way to do it. Um, and boiled peanuts, like I, I'm like, it's the, if the weather's coming back. It's time for the, the vegetable stand to, to come out. And, you know, I keep those people in business all summer with the, um, the boiled peanuts. So, and then, um, yep, collards, kale, and then Lisa, you did mustard or turnips the other day, and she said they were a great hit at their house. Um, another favorite that I do 
quite often um, do it under pressure um, is the Mississippi roast. I don't know if anybody's done that, but it's it's definitely a, a favorite. Um, I make it once and we eat it you know, at least twice, um, but it's typically a three pound, um, either just a, a, a beef, like a beef roast or even a pork roast. I've done pork before too. One packet of ranch seasoning, which everybody knows that that's kind of my secret ingredient on, on all of the things, and um, and then one packet of au jus, and then I think like six little pepperoncini um, peppers that you put in there, and then I put it in for like 80 minutes, um, and it is just fall apart, like fall apart tender, um, so so good to eat. And then um, I think somebody mentioned ribs at the very beginning. I think Kelly's having ribs tomorrow night, but that is definitely one of my favorites and, and half the time when I try to pull them out they are so fall apart that you can't get them out what I love about the ribs um, is you can actually um, interline you can do two racks so I'll you know kind of wrap them around and then you can just add like some root beer or I do coke zero or dr pepper zero and um you know it's just a, a really quick way to do it and I think it only takes like 40 minutes you would think they had been on the like the smoker all day long um you know just how quick and easy they are to to do all right so what other vegetables have you guys done in yours when I, I when I do the chicken I actually do the chicken I cut up potatoes and then the, the carrots I've never eaten so many carrots until I got this quick cooker because yeah. they are so good this way yeah mm -hmm. it's all done at the same time and if you do it separately i think it's like four five minutes mm -hmm. if you do just carrots if that yep yeah. the one thing that yeah. i learned the one thing with, that I, with, yeah um, was yeah. that i um broccoli one minute to steam and that's all you need one minute one minute i tell you if not you're gonna have like broccoli dip <laughs> so so broccoli is a, a a real quick one um to do so um, and spaghetti squash. So, yep, that's that's really easy. And same things with um, butternut squash. Um, that's a that's a great one um, to do in there as well. It makes it a lot easier to to work with and and manage. So, all right. Any other uh, cauliflower? Okay. Yep. I've actually done the um, the recipe that you put in there, and then you um, put the mayonnaise mixture um, mixture on the top, and then put it under the boiler. So, okay. So Melissa wants to know how you do your spaghetti squash, Mia. So you're up. I'll give you the microphone. <laughs> I don't know if you want to hear everything that's going on here, but um, I've done it where you cut it in half and just do it for eight minutes on high pressure, but I've done it without even cutting it and doing it a little bit longer if it will fit. And then it just, you know, takes all the hassle of having to, I mean, if you cut it, then you can scoop out the seeds and that's a little bit easier, but it's a lot easier than having to roast it or whatever. Yep. yep. It's quick and easy and, and easy to, to pull, pull all the goodness out. So. Um, all right, so we kind of, we talked about meats. We talked about um, some veggies. What other questions do you guys have, or what are what are some of the biggest concerns um, any of you have with with using it, or just the kind of questions do you have that, that you're like, oh, I, you know, wish that I knew about this, or I'm trying to think of what. I know you've done spaghetti. How long have you done that for? Um, like spaghetti noodles or like sauce with the sauce and the spaghetti and i know the one time you browned it we had a meeting but just mm -hmm. just if i wanted to do sauce and spaghetti um so if i do if i'll um, sear or saute the the meat ahead of time and drain it um and then put everything in there anytime you do a pasta it only takes five minutes and so that's one of the we're going to do the tuscan spaghetti um tonight so i'm going to show you that in just a few minutes um i've got most of the things prepped um but that's a delicious recipe we're going to sear some chicken we're going to you know, add a bunch of different things and um the spaghetti noodles and it takes five minutes to cook which is which is wonderful so um that's that's definitely a favorite. Um, I, I fed my, my family grilled cheese sandwiches. I was like, the good dinner is going to be after nine, and we'll just have it tomorrow. Okay, so I, I promise. <laughs> so, um, good stuff. Good stuff going on there. So, um, all right. Another thing that I did earlier today, let me grab it. Is I love that you can do um, desserts as well. So um, I, this is actually a keto cheesecake, and I'll share the recipe for just the regular cheesecake, and then um, also the the keto cheesecake. Um, but I, as soon as I 
figure this recipe out, I absolutely fell in love with it. So it took 40 minutes um, to make this cheesecake in the springform pan um, that, that goes in the, um, the, the quick cooker. And um, it actually works for, for other brands too. So they're all pretty universal size. It's about a six quart capacity. But you guys, I had only made, um, I had only made cheesecake from the box, like the Jello instant, you know, the one that came with the graham cracker crust. Like I had never made a, a real cheesecake because I just was, I'm not a baker. Um, so I was really intimidated by this, but I, this is the first one I've made probably in six months. But I'll, I'll make these like back to back. So I'll, I have two of these and I will like, I, I'm like the cheesecake factory. I am cranking these babies out. Um, but this is a great little, little sweet that I can enjoy um, without any of the, the stress. Um, and, and yeah, no guilt, no guilt there. <laughs> so, um, all right, so let's see. Yeah, just put that cheesecake is just enough for my filling, but just the right size. Now, um, there is a little fluted pan that's really neat that you can do a couple of different um, types of cakes and you can even do things outside of cakes. But um, has anybody made the chocolate pudding um, or any other type of dessert um, in, the, in the pressure cooker? You should try it. There we go. <laughs> so, I've only but, done the cheesecake. Mm -hmm. And if anybody ever wants to try my um, try my um, spring form pan, let me know. All right, Tammy, um, the other Tammy, uh, Tammy, I'm going to put you on the spot if you're, if you're available. Um, so this is from Tammy, a nurse, and she's a nursing instructor, and um, her work. Oh, she's having technical difficulties, so you you can um you can chime in. Um, and she I think she just texted me, but um so she okay. at work today. Um, there's a bunch of people that have a variety of pressure cookers. Sounds like some of them use them. You know, some people don't use it as much. So they did like all pressure cooker meals. So give us a summary of how that went at work today, which was part of the, my inspiration. I was like, I haven't done one of these in a while, so I need to need to share <laughs> with my friends. So tell us about your what what came today. It was actually really great. Um, we had oatmeal to start our morning with the steel cut oats. It was amazing. I've never had it, but I promise you, I told her she could make oatmeal for me anytime after that. <laughs> um, we had a cauliflower, gnocchi, spinach, kale, sausage, something soup. Uh, it sounded kind of way too healthy and almost disgusting, but it was really good. <laughs> Shocking enough. And then I made your Mississippi pot roast and it was the hit of the entire party. I had absolutely nothing left but the juice to come home. Yeah. So and so that, I was so tickled because Tammy told me that she had this idea. She's like, all right, what can I make that will just be a, a showstopper? And I'm, I'm like, Tammy, you need to just come on back to Paper Chef because, you know, <laughs> like, you're just such a natural. But um, I was, so we talked about a bunch of different things, but I said, you know, what I think gets people excited is, is when they like taste how tender and delicious, you know, like a, a chuck roast or, you know, whatever, you know, style of meat that you did. So I am so glad. Had you made that before? You'd made that before though, I've right? made it before, but I have to say the biggest selling point was most of them saw me running late for work this morning and carrying in all of my ingredients in two bags, you know, quick cooker, one hand, stuff in the other bag. And I literally stood in our break room and dumped everything in the Instapot. It's like, I got to be in class in 20 minutes. Got to go. Right. Yeah. We finally got to eat lunch at 12 today and they were like, this is so good. And we watched you just dump it and go. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I don't have time for all that other stuff. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Well, I'm, I'm glad that, that that was a hit. And uh, yeah, I was just like, what, what an inspiration that, <laughs> and um, um, were there, what, uh, did, any other things that came in? How many um, other people? Let's see. The other two ended up being in a crock pot. One was like a crustless chicken pot pie which was really good I've made that in my quick cooker as well so that's no big deal um and then the other thing we had I don't know how she made this yet I'm waiting on the recipe but it was a gluten-free like chocolate dessert but she said all that was in it was Nutella and eggs and she made them in the I know right um she made it in the little egg molds like you do the egg bites and that kind of thing oh my goodness yeah, that was some tasty stuff. I said, I got to have that recipe. If you would email that to me, please. Yeah, and, and you can then just put it in my group. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, seriously, there's like no, no flour. She's like, no, it's just eggs and Nutella. And I'm like, 
All right. Very good. That's all. She's okay. like, you can sprinkle powdered sugar over them if you want that. And I'm like, oh, I'm happy the way they are. <laughs> that's right. Who needs that extra? Well, good. Well, that's the perfect segue into me getting ready to do um, the new recipe. So as of the end of December, our quick cooker has been... Um, been out of like it's just been out of our line we we had a bunch we they put them on sale um because they knew that we were in development of something new and exciting so even when I was on the phone with Tammy I didn't give her too much detail <laughs> so, um so our new big thing that's um, our cover item um is called the deluxe multi-cooker so it is um basically very similar to the um the quick cooker that we had before um but it's, it does have a few more bells and whistles so um it's can do the slow cooker you can do um, it, um but I love with this one you can do slow cook or like a high slow cook because before the other one just did a slow cook so you couldn't you know do something four hours versus the um the eight hours unless you just went straight like you know quick cooker quick cooker um but what makes this one super unique is it has the sous vide um so a lot of people are you know loving to um you know cook with the sous vide method which is um you put your meats or whatever your vegetables or whatever you're going to do in a um like a ziploc bag or even a um, now i've got to go get one of those like food savers where you press all the you know the air out of um out of it and um and then put it in there so you, you cook it like 250 degrees and it's a multi-hour you know process so things like steaks or um roast um are just like just as tender as as you could imagine and then at the end all you have to do is is just sear it to give it some color so um i officially took mine out of the box today to make the cheesecake because i'm like you guys know me like i'm, I'm not gonna prep too too much um but i but i was really excited so i wanted to um, test it out so the same capacity um, that you have one of the cool things that they did was they did give it a little um, a little kickstand here, and I'll and put it on both sides for the lid. So, um, oh yeah, I, I'm, I'll yeah, I'll do that, Kelly. Once once this one's over, I'll show you um, the size difference um, of that. Um, but I do love this one, um, which I love the other one. You know, obviously, and I have used it all the time. And, and once it was no longer available um, for us to to sell, I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do in my live videos now for my, for my parties? Um, because it, it just was what I cooked all the time. So I'd cook and then I'd have to demo something else. Um, but I love just the ease of, um, you know, there are a bunch of preset um, settings here. Um, of course, still you've got the sear, you've got custom, um, all sorts of things. We do have an um, egg bite cup, um, so you can do the sous vide um, egg bites like um, you have at um, Starbucks, but for a fraction of the price and you can make them at home and, um, you know, you get to control what type of um, filling and stuff that's in here. Um, but a, a couple of really nice things is, of course, with the other one, you could delay um, this one. You can, too. So today I prepped the cheesecake, but I didn't want to start it before I went to school because I, I wasn't sure, like, if we had errands afterwards and I didn't want it to sit there you know um just natural release and way longer than it needed to um so I delayed it for an hour and then it only had about 15 minutes um left to cook when we got home which was really really cool it's got cool sounds too um but what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and hit the sear feature Let's see. all right all right and I'm um, so the sear feature is gonna um going to go for just a couple of minutes um, and I'm going to put a little bit of oil in here as we um, prep for our Tuscan spaghetti. Um, so this is a, a recipe that I've done at a lot of my in-home cooking parties because it, it just it shows a lot of um, really cool tools but it's it's delicious. It's like a restaurant quality um, recipe that your family is going to love. Unfortunately I'm, I'm trying to stay away from the carbs so I'll probably have a you know not all the carbs but the carbs that I'm, I'm used to, to eating. I've been the queen of the the, um, the boiled eggs lately. So I am going to let that um, sit for just a couple of minutes to get hot. And then I'm going to bring over handy dandy um, rapid prep mandolin. So, um, and I really am not going to show a ton of um, other products, but if you have questions about other products, obviously ask, but, um, but this is such a fun, fun product to use um, that I figured you guys wouldn't wouldn't mind seeing me do do this all right so i'm going to set it on the slice you can do um, a julienne cut you can do 
um, a slice, you know, just like you would do like slice an onion or a potato. Um, and then you can also do a French fry setting. So I'm gonna put it on a number four, which is about midway. Um, and then I am gonna put that onion right in there. I've got it at a weird angle so you guys can see. So, um, and everything is nice and uniform. So I love um, just the ease of being able um, to use, use that. So we're gonna sear um, the, the chicken, the onion and some garlic um, once it gets nice and hot um, to pop in there. And then um, we'll add a couple of other ingredients. And again, like I said, it's gonna take about five minutes um, to cook this whole recipe, which is pretty fantastic. So, um, all right, let's get over to the garlic. It called for, I think, four um, cloves of garlic, but you know, that's, that's never enough. So I did a little bit more. Um, and I'm gonna, I already have a couple of pieces that are peeled, um, but I am gonna use, um, use the, um, you know, the garlic peeler. Oh, it's, it's real wet on there. So I'm going to do the garlic peeler and it just takes the, the skin right off of that. And then I'm just going to put the garlic right in the little garlic slicer and I'm going to just slice it right into um, where the onions are at until we're ready to, to put it in there. Now I do wish, I hope one day that they will come back with the garlic peeler by itself. Um, but as of right now, it's a, a set, um, so the two of these come together, but they're, they're fantastic. But quick and easy, nice way to, to get some super thin, uniform garlic going. Um, I put other things in there too, carrots. Um, I've, done, um, I've done Parmesan cheese. You can do um, little cucumber sticks, all sorts of things. And chocolate is a great, you can put the chocolate in there and grate it as well. So. You do almonds too, Jamie. Yep, yep, you can slice almonds. You're exactly right. Okay. okay. So what I what I what I missed when I thought I was prepping it, it gives you the option to sear it um high, medium, or low. And so I just forgot to to choose the setting and then push start. So. Um, it will still take just a couple of minutes to do that, but I think that will um, we'll catch up with that in just a few minutes. All right, so let's see how our chicken's doing. We've got one minute left on our frozen chicken, so hopefully that will come out, um, and then I'll, I'll put the rice. So I'm going to make some buffalo chicken dip with that tomorrow, but I just figured um, that would be a great way for me to show you guys the, um, the chicken um, for that. Um, all right, so what are some other recipes that you guys do that you love? Love in your pressure cooker. Anything else that, oh, pad thai, ooh, yum. I need that recipe. And as a matter of fact, one of our new pantry um, items is a pad thai um, seasoning. So it's a three pack, like our Tuscan chicken, our chili. So we've got a new pad thai and then um, a scampi. So you can do chicken, you can do shrimp, um, you can do it without, um, you know, without a protein um, if you want to. So I'm really, really excited um, to, to try those. But um, Melissa, definitely share that, um, share that, you know, recipe, and I'll, I'll share it with everybody else too. Okay, so Kelly does sausage and pasta. Yep, that's right. Um, and so that's the one that I do a ton, um, sausage and peppers. So I'll do um, usually two packs of Italian sausage, um, like two onions, two bell peppers, pop it in there, sear it for a few minutes, and then cover it with your favorite spaghetti sauce. Um, and um, that that really takes no time at all. Um, to do and then you can serve it over pasta or even serve it like as a hoagie um you know so those are those are good as well so all right speaking of the the eggs we said the egg bites while ago um the egg has cooled now um so what i do is i just kind of crack it and roll it and i love when this happens it comes off in one sheet do you guys see that like there's there's no no little nicks on my um, on my egg and it is perfect. And then when I go to cut it, it is gorgeous. There's no um, green in the in the ring. So that is just a perfect, perfect egg. As a matter of fact, Preston, um, that while I was getting dinner ready for everybody, he decided that he wanted some deviled eggs. And so we had three eggs that were in the 
um, refrigerator. And sure enough, homeboy made himself some deviled eggs and had a little appetizer, paprika, and everything on it. So he was going to make a wonderful, wonderful spouse one day. <laughs> All right, so we've got our onions, our garlic, and then chicken. So I took two chicken breasts, and um, it, it called for it to be in thin little strips, uh, but I ended up doing it just in little chunks because um, that's just typically what I do with little, little chunks for that. Um, it does work with the, the same lid um, that our old one, um, you know, the same lid that um, the quick cooker had. So we'll let that sear for just a couple of minutes and get a couple of other things ready over here. You see the wine, get excited. <laughs> All right, so um, after that, um, I'll take the, the chicken and stuff out and we'll deglaze it with this, with about three-fourths of a cup of wine and then there'll be enough just to put me to bed just right <laughs> in just a little bit. All right, stir around. Now, another thing that I've done in here um, is a, like an omelet, like a breakfast omelet. Um, in the, the um, in the ceramic pot, so I love um, being able to do things in the accessories. And like I said, if you've got another brand, um, our accessories do um, do work. Now in the catalog, I'm pretty sure it says that if you or use some other product other than the Camper Chef one, it voids the warranty. But I can't imagine I can't imagine that there would be really any issues um, with that at all. So. All right, let's see, a certain type of wine. It was Chardonnay, yeah. So it was um, like a, a white wine. All right, so the other things that we're gonna do, so this is, um, the, I'll give you the, the recipe lineup. So two chicken breasts, an onion, garlic, um, the Chardonnay. We're gonna use a can of fire roasted tomatoes. So that gives it a really, really nice um, flavor. We're gonna do a whole box of spaghetti or linguine. I have to have spaghetti. Um, and then it calls for, four to five cups of chicken broth or stock. Now I am, I always just use bouillon cubes because it's just, it's compact. You um, you get, I think like 227 of these and you only have to boil a couple of times a year. So for every um, cube, you just add one cup of water and it just makes it nice. Now, if you need a lower sodium option, this is this is not it, um, but I, I'm, I typically use that, and um, and even with like um, I did um, the chicken penne al fresco. I don't know if anybody's done that in the um, rock crocker, the deep cover baker. Um, I did that a couple of times last week, once for Valentine's Day, and then um, for something else. And um, that's exactly what I did. I did the the um, the bouillon cubes and um, and the water. So that was that was really easy to do. Um, and then we're going to do some salt and pepper. And then that's going to cook. It's going to take about five minutes for those ingredients um, to cook. Once um, it is done, we'll stir it real good. And then I'll turn the sear feature back on. Um, so we'll turn it back on to sear. I'll add some heavy cream. So one cup of heavy cream. Um, I do have some um, Parmesan cheese that I've started grating. Um, we'll add that. And so that's going to give it that nice creamy, um, that creaminess that um, that really just makes it very restaurant quality. And then we're going to add some fresh spinach. So I've got an um, eight ounce bag of spinach. So you're adding some great veggies in there. And then, of course, we're going to top it with some bacon. So um, this is one of the shortcuts that I do often is I'll buy the pre-cooked bacon and then just pop it in the air fryer to crisp it up. And um, that's easy peasy. Um, another thing I do, I always have like a giant bag of um, bacon bits. Um, in my refrigerator because we put it in omelets, we put it on salads, we just shoot it and we put it in a little cup and just shoot it. We just love bacon at our house. Um, so um, so that's another shortcut sometimes if you don't want to, um, you know, bacon or have the full size bacon. All right, while that chicken, let me stir this chicken one more time and then I'll take out that other chicken. It's smelling good. And what's nice about this is because the um, the chicken is is cooking here, um, when we go to, to take it to pressure, it won't take nearly as long because it's nicely hot under the bottom. Um, all right, so uh, the next little safety feature is um, the little push button there, um, and then the steam releases. Um, some other models may have one where you have to push across, but just make sure that your um, your face and your hand is away from the steam release. 
I don't know if you noticed, but um, it, I did turn it a quarter turn because you just don't want that steam and water to go on your on your cabinet. So if I had let it go, it would have hit me in my lights. So I just did a quarter turn there um, to make it even easier. So, all right. All right, I don't know who's on iPhone, but tell me who it is so I can be in the know. All right, maybe somebody dialed, dialed in with, with both um, a computer and their phone. All right, so I'll go ahead and break these up so they're ready to go once we're ready. All right, so that smells good and looks good. And um, it doesn't have to be all the way done because we're, we're gonna continue cooking it, but it just gets that, um, that pink away. Um, so now we're gonna add the wine. Go ahead and add the wine. Now this is funny, I did a party a couple of years ago and I, can, I forgot who it was, but I had two brand new consultants they came and observed um, the party. So that should be really when I'm doing my best parties. However, I made this recipe, um, got all the way through, released the pressure. And I'm like, gosh, this thing is certainly soupy. And I noticed that my package of pasta was still on the countertop unopened. <laughs> so I had to admit that I was definitely camper not perfect. And I sold quite a few of those that night because people were like, oh, I guess she can she's even even she makes mistakes so and it was an easy fix after all was said and done all right so remember so far we just have the chicken the um onions and garlic now we've got four cups of broth um and then the wine and i'll add a little salt and pepper kind of Some, uh, some salt and pepper. All right, and then I'm going to pop that lid right on there. And then I'm pretty sure it's custom. Oh, got to do the tomatoes. Whoops. Stay so focused on getting the pasta in there tonight. Uh, I almost forgot the, the, the real flavor. All right, so there we go. And then I'm gonna do custom for five minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it so I can see it. Hit the X button. Custom. All right, and then I'm gonna push the button to um, adjust the time. All right, and then it gives you the option right here to what, what type of pressure you want, if you want a delay um, or not, and then keep warm. And then just when you're ready, you just push the button and let it hold. So um, it says run, and what, what will happen is it will, will continue to, um, to come to pressure, and um, hopefully it will be done um, again next time at all. Finally, at least here. Good. I'm just nice tender, tender chicken breast that I'll shred that up. And um, because I did hit the, the jackpot on some cream cheese, it's kind of hard to find these days. I don't know if you're a big cream cheese eater, but I am. And the last two months has been a little bit pitiful at my house. Um, so um, I'll make some buffalo chicken dip for the weekend with that. All right, so I'm gonna leave about one cup of the chicken broth and then pour the rest. And then um, that's what I'm gonna do, put the rice in. So it'll be like a, I can take maybe a little bit of that chicken, um, the chicken breast and put in there to make chicken and rice. But what I did was just one cup of long grain rice 
and I did rinse it. So I've I'm tried it both ways because normally I just do my um, rice in the rice cooker or the three cut um, three quart micro cooker in the microwave. But it's really nice to do it in here, especially if you're doing like a um, like an Asian inspired dish because it's really like really good, like the the um, Chinese restaurant um, rice. But if you don't rinse it, it's going to be really really starchy. So what I did was rinse it, and then I'll just pop it right in there. Pop that right on. So it's still pretty hot. Um, so my little steam indicator is not allowing me to close it just yet um, because it, there's still a lot of pressure. So all I'm going to do is just roll over to steam, um, do time, four minutes on steam, and voila. So hopefully that will come together about the same time this will. So all right, so that's pretty much my song and dance that I've got for you. So what kind of questions do you guys have for me? Are you all ready to, to try some new recipes and have fun with your, with your pressure cookers? Did you just put a cup of broth in there with the rice? Is that all you did? Yep, yep. So um, that's one of the, the things that your um, little guide will tell you that um, the new um, multi-cooker guide is not out on the um, for the, the e-cookbooks yet, but I'll be glad to, um, to share that too. But it's got a lot of the same great recipes, um, but it, it gives you um, a breakdown. Um, yep, so with white rice, you do one cup of rice rinsed and then one cup of your liquid water but I did the broth and then it's four minutes and then you let it remain for 10 minutes so that's a that's a great um thing some people don't understand what's natural release versus the manual release so if a recipe calls for a manual release that means once your timer's up so if it's a 10 minute timer you go ahead and press the the steam release right away um because yeah you know, especially stuff like pasta you don't want it to, to stay there. It gets really, you know, it would get gummy um, if you left it in there. Whereas a meat wouldn't matter so much because it's just going to get more tender and more tender. So, um, but if it calls for a natural release, that's where you just kind of let the pressure come down. Um, it starts releasing. Okay. So. All right. All right. Angela, yeah, you can cook more. I, I love it. So yeah, I'll, I'll just keep feeding you guys some recipes. Um, you make it quinoa all the time, but never in your quick cooker. Good, you're gonna try it. And um, it um, has a um, a quinoa. Uh, yep. So both quinoa. So you would do a, a cup and a half, um, three minutes, and then one cup of liquid, and then you'll do a manual release, a quick release. You know, after the the three minutes, which is good. Um, since Tammy mentioned the the steel coat, um, steel cut oats, um, you would do three and a half cups. Um, to one cup of water, 10 minutes, and then the natural release there. So lots and lots and lots of great um, idea, uh, options. Um, I had lunch with somebody yesterday and she made um, quinoa stuffed bell peppers and they were so good. So she had ground beef and the quinoa and like some seasoning, maybe some um, pepper and um, like onion. And it was delicious. I think I could even pull that over on the um, on the Swanson boys. <laughs> so, all right. So Angel, what is the cookers? This is the new one that's coming out um, on March 1st. So next Tuesday, I'll do my big launch party on the, um, on the 1st. So if anybody and, you know, obviously you guys will all get invitations to that. Um, so it's just the, the latest, the latest new Cadillac on, on the market. Um, the biggest difference is with the slow cooker, you could do low or high slow cook. And then it's got the sous vide. So you can um, basically a water bath for, you know, different yeah. and vegetables and, and stuff like that. So good question. And then let's see. That's a good, we've got some quinoa inspiration. So. That's good. And still oats stick to still the pot. When, I, when I've done it, it um it didn't. So I I've did. done oatmeal a couple of times. I've actually done an oatmeal bar at a um, brunch party. So we had different toppings that, that we prepped and had the oatmeal um in here, which was which was good. So all right, so let's see. So Angela, your birthday's this weekend? Uh -oh. Edith is her sister. I hope Edith is gonna cook for you. <laughs> And her quick cooker. <laughs> so, all right. What else? What other questions can you guys think of? 
I hope this was was inspirational and gave you some some new ideas. Got to check it out. Now, I'm um, tomorrow. I'm gonna post my traditional like who wants a catalog post. Um, so what I'll do is um, each one of you, if you'll go ahead and shoot me a quick message. Um, and you can be the first on the list. So yours will go out um, in the next in the next day or two. Um, and then everybody that um, hits me up after that, you know, they'll, they'll have to wait, but you guys will get first access um, to some awesome, awesome things um, that are that are coming out for spring. So really, really excited. So let me see what are some of the other things that I am looking forward to sharing with you guys. Oh, this is super, super fun. Let me see if there's a better picture. Um, there's a thing called the Secret Center Cake Pan. So um, it's a, a cake pan, the two different um, pans that you cook together and one has like a whole kind of like a butt cake. Um, so when you go to ice it, you can like do fillings and, or, you know, your different fillings or if you were doing a gender reveal, you could put the candies or um, different things in there. And even um, one of it has like a, Almost like it little indentions in the top. So really, really fun to um, with that. Some oh, here's here's another good picture. Let me bring that over. So make sure you guys stay tuned next next Tuesday. But there's the the cake in the middle, and then you can even put like little, you can even put like little um, in the in the top. In the, in the top. Um, what else? Oh, if anybody has, oh, Monica, Monica you're going to be excited. Um, a new addition to the stainless nonstick. So you're, there is a um, eight and a half inch um, nonstick pan that will go great with your collection of those things. Um, all kinds of fun. So I mentioned the, oh, another great thing in addition to the um, little egg bite cups, um, there are some reusable um like reusable bags. So you could send them, you could use them for your lunch if you're trying to be um, more conscientious of um, using single use um, things, but it also works for the CV. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. All right, our rice is ready. So it's gonna, um, uh, 10 minutes on natural release. So it says warming across the top. And then um, before it was counting um, down. So it went from four to zero. And then now what will happen is it will say warming across the top and it's gonna go from one to all the way to 10. So once once that comes out, um, we'll be good to go. So, all right, so hopefully we're, we're almost done on our pasta. And if it's not done in the next few minutes, I'll just share a picture in the group. <laughs> so. Jamie, somebody was asking the differences in the quick cooker and then the new multi-pot. Yeah, um, so, one of the things. Yeah, go ahead. What were you saying? Okay. I was going to say one of the things that the newer one has that the the quicker doesn't was a sterilizer. Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. So for baby bottles or you know other other things that need to be sterilized, that's that is a um, super super good um, good point. Sure, there's there's definitely things that that could be could be sterilized in this house. That's for sure. <laughs> so. Oh, and the yogurt <laughs> function. Yeah, so a lot of people were using the proof on the other one. But there is a um, great yogurt recipe that you can do in here. Um, I um, didn't make yogurt in the other one because it just seemed like a, quite a bit of time. And I can't get my laundry done because, yeah, I think it was eight to 12 hours um, on that. And so so anyway, but if, if that's important to you to be able to um, do, there's a homemade yogurt and a homemade vanilla yogurt. Um, you could you could certainly make that. So, and Megan, I'm glad you're here. Life, yes. Anybody with with little people, we know. <laughs> I'm hearing here some action over here now. So, all right. Yeah, so I'm um, Kelly. Yeah, I'll I'll shoot. I'll put the recipe in there. But it um it says the the like cook time for that is I think it was eight to twelve hours. Find that again. Um yeah. So you are you're searing it for the milk um for about twenty to twenty five minutes. So that would be like hands on time. 
um, that you would have, and then you're going to add some other ingredients, and then it's going to um, going to cook on the yogurt setting for eight to twelve hours. I'd have seventeen things cooked in the time that the yogurt, you know, in, in the pressure cooker, um, in the time that the yogurt would take. But but the folks that have tried it love it. They they really really love it. So. All right, we're we're got, we got some action going on here. I can hear it. So, all right, so our, our pressure indicator came up, so we can we can see that. So that is good. All right, and don't forget to send me a message, and um, I'll um, if you if you want the um, the new catalog, I'll get those out to you. And then I'm um, stay tuned for next um, next Tuesday. I'm gonna do a um, usually what I do is starting at eight o'clock. I'll um, have all of the the products posted in every couple of minutes in a group and then um at 8 30 from 8 30 to 9 i'll do a quick little 30 minute zoom with um you know just just showing you some of the the new things but you guys got the, the sneak peek on that so excited, <laughs> excited that you did so all righty good 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 all right angels my neighbor across the street so you'll have to come try this pasta and see if you like it <laughs> so, uh, all right, well, I'm not going to make you guys um, hang hang any longer, but um, I will um, end the, um, in the, the event that I created. I'll share the pictures once this comes out. If you are not in my Jamie Swanson's Pressure Cooker um, group, um, hop in there. So when I do events like this, um, I usually share the resources. Um, if you guys have some great recipes that you want to share too, please, please share them in there. Even it, it doesn't have to be a peanut butter recipe, just any of your favorite um, pressure cooker recipes. We just, you know, my goal is to inspire people. The worst thing, the worst thing that um, you know, happens is when I have, a when I party, have, I have an in-home party and somebody um, says, oh, I've got the rock rock or I've got the pressure cooker and I don't use it. Um, so anyway, I always want to make sure that um, people are getting the, the follow-up after this one. So if you um, need ideas for more recipes, even just a one-on-one, -on -one, I've offered it. I was like, girl, we'll do that. Like, we'll do that time. I would help you help help do that thing. So. All right. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining thank me. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you. 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 Thank